Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this tutorial on Bayesian rolling regression. So uh, one of the big concepts that we're going to be talking about in this tutorial is called Gaussian processes, right? And just a disclaimer before we go on, because I am going to be modeling stocks, this is by no means uh, something to go ahead and uh, press stocks, okay? So I don't take any responsibility for, for you going ahead and using this uh, as, a mark, uh, as a tool for pricing. So anyway, let's, uh, with that, let's get on with the tutorial. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna be doing is importing things that we're gonna use, pandas, uh, map all the, the usual. But we're gonna be using linear regression, but more importantly, uh, we're gonna be using PyMC3. Um, and then the, the data that I use is uh, something that I got from Kaggle. Um, it's five years worth of uh, stock data, uh, the US stock data, I should say. And for this specific tutorial, we're gonna be uh, looking at Microsoft. Um, so this is what the stock price looks like over five years. And right? so 2012, 2017, and you can see it's generally uh, trending up, right? So uh, now to, to give you an idea of Gaussian processes, because that's, that's gonna be a big component of this, um, I'm gonna generate some synthetic data. Okay, so that could be that could end up looking like stock prices. So, uh, and the way that you do that is that the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to generate some random numbers. Okay, so normally distributed random numbers, I should say, and then I'm going to take the cumulative sum. Okay, so whenever you take the cumulative sum, what essentially what you're saying is uh, y y t is equal to uh, y t minus one plus error. Okay, so that's what's happening when you take cumulative sum, uh, well, I should say error of t, okay? Um, yeah, so, and this is what it ends up looking like. Now, if I was to plot just the normally distributed random numbers on its own, this is what it looks like. Okay, so there's not no trend, it's just literally noise, right? Whereas when you sum them up, you get this nice kind of trend happening, which you can, which you can see. Uh, so it's moving somewhere. I, th I think I think it's a lot to do with Brownian motion, but you know that's that's a side comment. So uh, how do, how are we going to uh, model these stocks? So what we're going to do is we're going to break this up into four different segments, and each segment corresponds to one year. And for each year, I'm going to give it a trend line. Now you might be thinking, okay, hang on, this is an easy problem. Why don't I just literally model uh, each year with a different linear regression? which is completely valid, and that's exactly what we do the, as our first attempt. Um, so we use scikit-learn, and you can see they're, they're doing a pretty good job of getting the, the trend line, right? So uh, the way that you do it is you go model equals linear regression, that's what I import from scikit-learn, and you go model of fit, okay? Pretty standard, it's, it's really easy to do. Um, so this, this is great, right? You, you can't stop there, but one thing you might notice is, so suppose you look at this, the slope, right? In the, in the slope, um, what one thing you will notice is that the slope doesn't change much, okay? So if you, if you, if you look at it, it's, it's just changing by just a tiny amount, whether it's uh, the, the slope is increasing a bit more rapidly or slower, it doesn't really matter. The point is like it, it changes by very little. And this is the information that we're gonna be using to uh, to do a Gaussian process on. So look, let's look at the actual modeling now, actually, before we get to that actually. One thing I need to mention is that I do standardize the data. So I mean, minus the mean do I have a standard deviation because it makes my Bayesian model, the PyMC3, uh, easier to sample from. Okay, so that's just a PyMC3 thing that you generally need to do. Uh, but okay, so putting that aside, this is the actual model that we're gonna be doing. Okay, so alpha t is the previous alpha plus uh, normally distributed random variable. Uh, so alpha being the intercept. So I'm also saying the intercept doesn't change very much, but also, but mainly the, the slope doesn't change very much. Okay, so again, the errors are normally distributed. One thing you need to know is that the alpha that I'm talking about over here is per section. Okay, so alpha here has like, so this is alpha zero, alpha one, two, three. Same with beta, beta zero, beta one, beta two, three, okay? Um, and then the trend line is 
is just literally alpha plus beta times t of that section. Okay. And finally, uh, finally, I end up saying my actual observations is the, the mean, the trend, plus an error. Okay, so, so no Gaussian plus story here, just literally uh, just a normal, uh, normal distribution, okay, which is error y, normal zero, sigma y. Okay, so let's go, go ahead and code this up. All right, so the, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say um, alpha and beta are, so we're going to code these two sections, but PIMC3 has a Gaussian random walk module, and that's, that does exactly what we've done over here. Okay, so these two lines are saying these, these four lines up here, okay, which makes uh, life a bit easier for us. I have put a uh, prior on the standard deviation as well, but let's, let's really come back to that later. The main part really that you need to focus on is this, this thing over here. So what I'm saying is that the alpha regression, I really should have called it trend, um, is alpha indexed by T section. Okay, so the variable T section, um, in, in my case, is basically saying a whole bunch of zeros here, a whole bunch of ones, twos, and threes. Okay, so, um, so if I was to print it out, this is what T section looks like. So a whole bunch of zeros, four. So basically what it's doing is from the four numbers that I get here, it's picking the alpha that I need for that particular section of time. Um, and then I multiplied that by the actual, actual T that I have. And finally, uh, my likelihood is this thing. Okay, so the mean is my regression, my trend line, and standard, standard deviation with, over here. Notice how I haven't written Gaussian random walk for the likelihood. Again, that's, that's quite important to understand. And um, also, this is an observed variable. Okay, so y is my observed variable, so you need to uh, let PIMC3 know that. Okay, so that you don't end up sampling from likelihood as well. So what you're gonna be sampling from is um, all these things that don't have observed against it. Um, so just quickly coming back to the standard deviation, um, all I'm saying is that this, the stand, like how much, how much can my alphas vary by on in each, each time step? Okay, and I limit that to a maximum of one and low limit of zero, right? So um, uh, basically the, the distribution that you have on standard deviation ends up saying how much can I vary my uh, alphas by? Um, and this is because I've said PM dot uniform, basically I'm just saying I really don't know that uh, you figure it out, okay? Uh, depending on the data, it'll, it'll change the distribution that you get. So I've already gone ahead and sampled it. Uh, yeah, and that's all you have to tell PANC3 is PM.sample. Okay, so you don't have to do the nasty maths behind uh, anything that's going on underneath, right? And PANC3 will take care of it for it. So once you've done that, what, what I end up with is a, so when I look at the trace of alpha, for example, I have a thousand by four. Uh, if I look at the trace of the standard deviation, is thousand uh, of of the standard deviation thing. And the reason I have 1,000, so I have n sample set to 500, but for some reason, uh, PIMC3 multiplies that by the number of cores that I have. So in this case, there are two cores that that's been using. So um, yeah, so I end up with 1,000 thousand variables. Um, yeah, okay, so let's go ahead and, um, and see, what, see what we get. So, so the first thing that I go is I go, uh, well, I just want to—I just want, want to find the mean trend, okay? Before I actually plot the the samples, I want to find the mean trend. So I just go mean along the axis of zero, okay? Because keep in mind, alpha is thousand by four, and so is beta, right? Because four, because there are four sections again, and then the 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 trend line is a mean of the t section. It's the indexing bit multiplied by time. And before I, I plot this out, keep in mind I standardized it, so I need to unstandardize it. So I multiply the y standard deviation and then add the, add the mean. Okay, so this, this is a whole process of, of uh, denormalizing the data. And then once I plot it out, this is what I get. This is the average trend line, okay? Um, 
so keep in mind what we did here is Bayesian regression. So with Bayesian things, you don't end up with just one number. I had to do the mean to get the Bayesian mean estimate, um, uh, which in some ways I'd argue is stronger than what we did in scikit-learn. So uh, because we did do Bayesian, one thing you should look at is you need to look at, you should probably look at the variance of, of this estimate. And the way that you do that is rather than looking at this standard deviation, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to plot, say, 200 of the, of the thousand iterations that I had. So I'm going to use the trace of alpha on its own. So not the mean of it, the actual trace. Uh, again, indexed by T-section. Uh, do the same thing for beta and multiply, multiply by time. Okay, so this is the white predicted thing over here. And if I look at the white predicted of the shape, this, uh, the, the shape of it this time, I have 1,000 iterations of that. So 1,258 is how many time steps that I have between 2012 and 2013. Uh, the number of days that I have. Um, yeah, so, um, and then if I was to plot 200 of those 1,000 iterations, I, I, I don't know why I didn't do the whole 1,000, but um, anyway, so when I plot 200 of them, this is what I get. So notice how there's a lot of lines going through here. So this is the variance of the trend line, okay? Um, so it's, it's basically saying that it's, it's fairly confident uh, well, that's, when it's when the trend line is when the thickness of this is is smaller, it's, it's saying you know what I'm, I'm fairly confident this is what what um, the trend line is supposed to be for that uh, time of the year. Okay, so keep, keep in mind the cycle learn gave you just one one single line. This is giving you well, in this case 200, but you know um, yeah, quite a, quite a few, and it's uh, it's giving you like a confidence level of the trend line. Um, yeah, and one last thing, uh, let's look at the standard deviation of the observations, right? So, so what I mean by that is the trace of SD, uh, the posterior of it. I guess the posterior of it is, is this thing over here. Um, so this is what you, what you get from doing uh, Pime C3 sampling, right? So you, you get uh, a distribution of, of whatever variable that you wanted, so in this case SD given the data, okay, so the prior, if you remember, I said was uniform, right? But after the sampling, this, this is like, it's, it seems to be quite confident uh, that it's between, somewhere between 2.35 and 2.4, okay? So now that I had this as well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to plot the, uh, the Y observations that I, that I could have gotten. Right, so the y observation, remember, is my my predicted line uh, plus uh, the predicted line uh, plus some uh, normal normal distributed uh, number, right? But it's so the reason I, I multiply by that by trace st is because that's exactly what I said when I was modeling this. So let's go back to the model quickly and just check it out. So I said the likelihood. Is, is, y, is y with the mean of re regression, so that might be the trend line, the standard deviation of SD. And that's what I said over here, coming back to this plot over here. So I'm going to uh, multiply a trace of SD with a random uh, normal distribution, right? And once I plot that, I get this, this, uh, this thing. So basically this is saying um, how much, so over the trend line, what, what should I expect the actual price to be okay. So plus or minus uh, one standard deviation. This, this is what I. Well, this is not one standard deviation. This is two hundred uh, numbers. So um, yeah. So that's that's uh, that's most of, of the tutorial. This on its own should uh, should be enough if you if you just start the trend line. But I want to do a bit more. I want to try and predict into the future as well. And that's one thing you you can do with PyMC three. Uh, by tweaking the model a bit. So this time, what we're going to do is, I'm going to say, I'm going to have exact same model, except one, one tiny uh, change in, in it. So instead of having shape is equal to K, I'm going to have shape is K plus one. Okay, so in the previous thing, I, I literally had just K. So K was four, whereas K is five. 
and five because I want one extra year. Okay, so the rest of the model you can go check it yourself, but it's exactly the same. And because we do that, uh, we end up getting this thing. All right, so the trend line is, um, so I'm, I'm all led to five years. Again, I've only plotted 200 of the trend lines. But one, one thing that you notice is that like in 2017, uh, so I only had, I think there must be something missing here. So, so I had that up until mid 2017. And I think I managed to index this wrong. Anyway, the, the, point, the point is like from, from, uh, from the middle of the year onwards, I get to the end of that year, and you can see that the variance is increasing of the trend line because it simply doesn't know. But the year after, it just explodes, right? So again, th this, this is the trend line. Of course, this, this seems unreasonable, but the point uh, that you should really get across is, um, is that the variance, it, it just keeps on increasing because the, the further and further we go into the future, we just don't know what's, what's gonna happen. Okay, and, and that's a really uh, cool thing about Bayesian uh, modeling. The, the less data points that you have, the more uncertain you will become. And that's usually the case when you do any kind of Bayesian modeling. Right? So the lack of data is, is shown, and of course, it shows you um, some, some estimate of the variance. Now keep in mind, this again is just a trend line, not, not the actual price that we expect to observe, because price is again, uh, the trend line plus or minus um, an error. And um, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. So if you have any questions or comments, please let, please let me know. Uh, but otherwise, thanks for watching and uh, please, please do subscribe. Thank you.